वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वी हैड डिस्कस लिटल बट अबाउट डायमेंशंस एंड हाउ डायमेंशनल एनालिसिस कैन बी पुट टू सेवरल यूजेस नाउ टुडे वी विल बी ट्राइंग टू सॉल्व अ कपल ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स बेस्ड अपॉन द लर्न कॉन्सेप्ट बट ट्राई टू दैट आई वुल लाइक टू गिव यू सम आइडिया रिगार्डिंग वॉट वी हैड स्टडीड ऑलरेडी अबाउट डायमेंशंस इन अ प्रीवियस क्लास From the previous day's discussion, we may define the dimensions of a physical quantity as the powers to which the fundamental units of mass, length, and time have to be raised to represent a derived unit of the quantity. So we know the dimensional formula of a physical quantity is an expression which tells us the fundamental units on which the quantity depends and the nature of the dependence. For example. the dimensional formula for velocity may be written as so if we denote symbolically v for velocity then within square brackets we enclose this symbol this is actually the representation for writing down the dimension so dimension of velocity becomes m to the power 0 n to the power 1 and t to the power minus 1 it repeats that unit of velocity depends on length and time it does not depend on mass further unit of velocity varies directly as unit of length and inversely as unit of time similarly if we denote v as the symbol of volume then we can write down the expression for volume the dimension for volume as m to the power 0 l to the power 3 and t to the power 0 so actually these equations these equations are called the dimensional equations of velocity or volume when a physical quantity is equated to its dimensional formula what we obtain is the dimensional equation of the physical quantity so the dimensional equation of velocity is m to the power 0 l to the power 1 t to the power minus 1 and similarly dimensional equation of volume is within square bracket v is equal to within square bracket m to the power 0 l to the power 3 t to the power 0 thus we may say that the dimensional formula of physical quantities can be obtained by defining their relation with other physical quantities whose dimensions in mass length and time are already known so now we will come to the topic of discussion for today that is uses of dimensional equations and we will be broadly concentrating on these three topics and trying to solve a couple of problems on these so the uses the three uses of dimensional equations are conversion of one system of units into another checking the accuracy of various formula and third derivation of formula let's begin with the first one conversion of one system of units into another this is based on the fact that magnitude of a physical quantity remains the same whatever be the system of its measurement this is based on the fact that magnitude of a physical quantity remains the same whatever be the system of its measurement so if q is the physical quantity that is going to be measured then it can be written in one system of unit as n1 u1 and in another system it may be written as n2 u2 for example if i am writing down the value of mass then q is mass in one system the mass may be written as 1 kg in that case n1 is the numerical value that is equal to kg and u1 is the unit that is equal to kg n1 is 1 and u1 is kg now the same value of mass can also be written as 1000 g so in this case n2 is 1000 and u2 is g 
but as we know from our understanding of mathematics that 1 kg is equal to 1000 g so obviously the value of mass is the same but the way of representing the value of mass is different because we are writing down the value in two different systems that is si system and cgs system so if you want to convert from one system to another like if we are knowing that the mass of a quantity is 1 kg and we are asked to convert 1 kg into cgs system if you want to know that how many grams will be making 1 kg then very easily by the method of dimensions using dimensional analysis we can do it for that let us obtain a general expression we will begin with this equation let us mark it as equation 1 and from equation 1 i may write down n2 equal to n1 u1 divided by u2 straight away i can write down n2 to be equal to n1 u1 by u2 now let m1 l1 and t1 be the fundamental units of mass length and time respectively in one system and m2 l2 and t2 be the fundamental units in the other system like for example in si system m1 is kg l1 is meter and t1 is second we know these are the fundamental units of mass length and time in si system similarly in cgs system m2 is gram l2 is centimeter and t2 is second so these are the fundamental units of length mass and time in the other system that is cgs system so now let these be the fundamental units we are using the general terms to represent the fundamental units let a b and c be the respective dimensions of the quantity in mass length and time in both the systems then the units of measurement u1 and u2 can be written as u1 equal to m1 raised to the power a l1 raised to the power b and t1 raised to the power c like for example i am considering one unit say newton so newton is equal to kg meter per second square so can't i write down this as m to the power 1 l to the power 1 and t to the power minus 2 so in this case what is a a is 1 what is b b is 1 and what is c c is minus 2 so in this manner i am writing down the units so now u1 is equal to m1 to the power a and l1 to the power b t1 to the power c similarly in different system u2 may be written as m2 raised to the power a l2 raised to the power b and t2 raised to the power c mark it as equation number 2 now making use of equation 1 and equation 2 i may write down n2 equal to n1 u1 by u2 so now n2 on substituting we will get n2 equal to n1 m1 to the power a l1 to the power b t1 to the power c divided by m2 to the power a l2 to the power b and t2 to the power c so on further modifying i can collect the like terms together and let me show you the modified expression so i can write down n2 equal to n1 m1 by m2 to the power a l1 by l2 to the power b and t1 
by t2 to the power c. So, this will become a general expression that will be used whenever we are given a question on conversion from one system of units to another. We can very easily do the calculations. So, let us try and apply this expression into solving one question. The question says convert an energy of 1 joule into ergs. We know standard unit, SI unit of energy is joule and erg is the CGS system. Erg is the absolute unit of energy on CGS system. So, how we can do the conversion? Let us see that. So, now the dimensional formula of energy, the dimensional formula of energy is m to the power 1, l to the power 2 and t to the power minus 2. Now, as I had told you in my previous class also that you need to remember the dimensions of most of the physical quantities because unless you are able to memorize them, it will not be convenient to carry out with the applications of the understanding of dimensions. So, obviously in the very first step, we have to remember what is the dimensional formula for energy and that is m l square t to the power minus 2. So, now we can do the comparisons and write down the powers. If the power of mass is A, it is equal to 1. If the power of length is B, we can write down it is equal to 2 as we can see. And the power of time, if it is represented by C, that is equal to minus 2. Isn't it? So, now let us write down for SI system and CGS system. For SI system m1 is equal to 1 kg l1 is equal to 1 meter and t1 is equal to 1 second what about the cgs system m2 is equal to 1 gram L2 is equal to 1 centimeter and T2 is equal to 1 second. Now, in this question, we have to convert an energy of 1 joule. So, 1 that is the value of n1. So, n1 is equal to 1. So, going back to the previous page, you see apart from n2, we are knowing all the terms. We know n1, we know m1, m2, l1, l2, t1, t2 and also a, b and c. So, now our work is to substitute the formula. So, n2 is equal to n1 m1 by m2 to the power a l1 by l2 to the power b and t1 by t2 to the power c So, now we can write down n2 equal to n1 is 1, m1 is 1 kg, m2 is 1 gram, a is 1, l1 is 1 meter, l2 is 1 centimeter raised to the power 2 as b was 2, t1 is 1 second t2 is also 1 second raised to the power minus 2. See, making use of all the values, we have written down this expression in the formula. 
Now, let us proceed with the calculations. So, now we can write down n 2 equal to 1 in place of 1 kg we can write down 1000 gram for m 1 and for m 2 it is 1 gram raised to the power 1 for time it was for length sorry for length it was 1 meter so we can write down 100 centimeter and in CG system it is centimeter raised to the power of 2 and the expression for time 1 second by 1 second raised to the power minus 2 so that gets cancelled you can cancel out the units for centimeter you can cancel out the unit gram so now you are left with n2 equal to 1000 raised to the power of 1 multiplied by 100 raised to the power of 2 so that gives you n2 equal to how much 10 to the power a 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 10 to the power 7 so this means 1 joule is equal to 10 to the power 7 ergs so in this manner very conveniently using the method of dimensions we can do the calculations isn't it there is a question for you find the value of a force of 100 newton on a system based upon the meter the kilogram and the minute as the fundamental units if suppose n one is equal to 100, 100 Newton and in the new system the units are kilogram, meter and minute Then what should be the value for N2? This you can solve by yourself. Now coming to the second, checking the correctness of the formula. Now this is principle of homogeneity of dimensions checking the accuracy of formula whether the given relation or formula is correct or not can be checked on the basis of the principle of homogeneity of dimensions according to this principle only that formula or expression is correct in which the dimensions of the various terms on one side of the relation are equal to the respective dimensions of these terms on the other side of the relation it should be clearly understood that powers of all the three that is mass, length and time m, l and t must match on either side of the formula. When powers of even one of them fail to match the formula is wrong. So in order to check the correctness of the given relation we have to write the dimensions of the quantities on both sides of the relation and if the principle of homogeneity of dimensions is obeyed the formula is correct. Again, let us try to understand it by making use of an example. The common equation of motion, the third equation of motion that is V square equal to U square plus 2 A S. Now, let us write down the dimension on the left hand side. Left hand side we are having V square. So, dimension of V square will be equal to V stands for velocity. So, L t to the power minus 1 raised to the power 2 that will give you L to the power 2 t to the power minus 2. Mark it as equation 1. Now, for right hand side, this was for left hand side. Okay. Now, let us write down for the right hand side. We are having dimension for u square and dimension for 2 a s. So, how can we write it down? For u square, 
we can write down L t to the power minus 1 raised to the power 2 plus for 2 a s we can write down 2 is dimensionless a is acceleration so l t to the power minus 2 and s is having the dimension of length so l so again you are having l square t to the power minus 2 so just see the first term is equal to l square t to the power minus 2 and the second term is also l square t to the power minus 2 so obviously the combined dimension will be coming equal to l square t to the power minus 2 now compare equation 1 and equation 2 you will see that LHS that left hand side is equal to the right hand side so as right hand side is equal to left hand side we may write down that the equation is correct the formula is correct so in this manner we can apply the knowledge of dimensions in checking the correctness of an equation lastly derivation of formula using the same principle of homogeneity of dimensions we can derive the formula of a physical quantity provided we know the factors on which the physical quantity depends we suppose the dimensions of the given physical quantity in terms of these factors combine them to form an equation write the dimensions of various quantities in terms of mass length and time on either side of the equation using principle of homogeneity of dimensions equate the powers of mass length and time on both sides of the dimensional equation the three equations so obtained are solved to obtain the values of three unknown powers or dimensions on substituting these values in the equation we formed we obtain the preliminary form of the relation or formula let us take an example derive an expression for time period t of a simple pendulum which may depend upon mass of bob length of pendulum and acceleration due to gravity so let us begin as per the question time period t is proportional to mass of bob we don't know the power length of the pendulum and acceleration due to gravity where a b c and a b and c are the dimensions so if we replace the constant of proportionality we can write down k as the constant of proportionality we want to replace the sign of proportionality we have to introduce a constant so let us write down k then m to the power a l to the power b and g to the power c mark it as equation 1 k is dimensionless now we have to write down the dimensions on both the sides on one side we are having time so we can write down m to the power 0 l to the power 0 t to the power 1 and on the other side the first term is that of mass so we can write down m to the power a the second term is that of length so we can write down l to the power b and the third term is acceleration due to gravity so we can write down l t to the power minus 2 raised to the power c so now let us solve it out so we will get m to the power a l to the power b plus c and t to the power minus 2 c now we have to compare on comparing the powers we get a equal to 0 b plus c equal to 0 and minus 2 c equal to 1 so that gives us instantly c equal to minus 1 by 2 as soon as we get 
c equal to minus 1 by 2 we can write down b plus c equal to 0 so that will give us b equal to minus c that is equal to half again using the values now a is equal to 0 b is equal to half and c is equal to minus half now we can straight away substitute in the first equation and we can write down therefore t is equal to k m to the power 0 l to the power half and c to the power minus half so therefore t is equal to k times root over l by g and that is the formula for time period of simple pendulum and as we all know that using other methods we can calculate the value of this dimensional constant and this k turns out to be how much 2 pi so we know that the time period of simple pendulum is given by t equal to 2 pi upon root over l by g now this is one of the limitation of the dimensional analysis this method gives us no information about the dimensionless constants in the formula 1, 2, 3, pi, whatever be the dimensionless constant, we are not getting any information regarding it. If a quantity depends on more than three factors having dimensions, the formula cannot be derived because this is because on equating the powers of m, l and t on either side of the dimensional equation, we can obtain three equations from which only three unknown dimensions can be calculated. We can also not derive the formula containing trigonometrical functions, exponential functions, logarithmic functions which have no dimension. The method of dimension cannot be used to derive an exact form of relations when it consists of more than one part on any side. For example, we cannot derive equations like s equal to ut plus half at square. So it gives no information whether a physical quantity is scalar or a vector. Furthermore, when dimensions are given, the physical quantity may not be unique as many physical quantities have the same dimension. For example, the mere correctness of a equation does not ensure its physical correctness. Work is equal to torque, like the dimension of work is equal to dimension of torque, but they are two different quantities. So these are few limitations of the concept of dimensions, but still, it is very useful to know what is dimension and we can employ it in several ways. Now one question I have already assigned to you all. Let me show it to you again that you need to solve this particular question. This is also your homework. And there are three more questions. I am simply reading it out for you. A new system of units of length is chosen such that the speed of light in vacuum is unity. What is the distance between sun and earth in terms of the new unit if light takes 8 minutes and 20 seconds to cover the distance? Check the correctness of the equation. Snth is equal to u plus a by 2 times 2n minus 1 where u is initial velocity, a is acceleration and Snth is the distance travelled by the body in the nth second. And the last question, the centripetal force F acting on a particle moving uniformly in a circle may depend upon mass m, velocity v and radius r of the circle. Derive the formula for F using the method of dimensions. So these all will be the home assignment for today. So you will solve these questions and see how much you have learned the concept of dimensions. Thank you.